Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Today I've got three more recipes for you just in case you're in a dinner rut and you need some new ideas. It is a very rainy and dreary day here. It's pretty cold. Yesterday it was in the low 70s. Today it's not supposed to get out of the 40s. So that calls for chili. And we're gonna be making a different version of chili today. I'm gonna to be making it in the Dutch oven on the stovetop. It's a white turkey chili, white bean turkey chili. That's what it is. <laughs> so you may have had white chicken chili before. This is using ground turkey and it's got a little bit of different ingredients. We're really excited about it. I think I have enough buttermilk to also make some cornbread. I'm gonna check on that. I really hope, really hope that we have enough. But chili and cornbread is on the menu. I needed two cups of buttermilk and that's exactly what I had left. It's a good day. So I just put my cornbread in the oven. I'm gonna heat up this Dutch oven to about medium high heat. And while I do that, I'm gonna chop up some onion. Let's add about a tablespoon, maybe two, of olive oil to the bottom. And we're gonna just saute, soften up our onions. This will probably just take like five minutes or so. I got sidetracked and let these kind of brown a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and add in some minced garlic. I'm just adding in a couple of teaspoons of the minced garlic. I'm also adding in two tablespoons of chili powder, a tablespoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and about an eighth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can always leave that out if you don't want the extra heat. So let's just stir that around. Now I'm just gonna add in a fourth a cup of water. Kind of deglaze the pan, break up the bottom. And now we're gonna add in our ground turkey. So this is just one pound of ground turkey. And now we're just gonna cook this all the way through. I have two cans of cannellini beans. I did drain and rinse them. So now what I'm gonna do is add some of them to this clear bowl here. Maybe a cup of them. And we're gonna mash this up. This will help thicken up our chili. Now that our turkey is done, I'm gonna add in the whole beans and our mashed beans as well. I've got these petite diced tomatoes with jalapeno and habanero. I'm gonna add in this entire can. And lastly, I'm just gonna add in about three cups of low sodium chicken broth. Let's stir this up and bring it up to a bowl. And then after it comes up to a bowl, we'll turn it down and let it simmer for about 20 or 30 minutes. So this has started to come up to like a simmer. I'm gonna turn it down and put the lid on it and we're just gonna let it do its thing for the next 20 minutes or so. spicy yes the lime lifts up the yeah chili powder that's in there mm, great beans I'm getting to where I like these white I like them beans. too they're white kidney beans is all they are but I don't know the texture of them is just better than just regular kidney beans yes, to me yeah. I'm not a fan of the regular kidney beans but these are really good yeah and I mashed up some of them in the soup to help thicken up the soup mm. Mm. okay I'm excited to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Someone took a bite out of my cornbread. I won't name names, but. Who would do such a thing? This person's not here, so that just leaves that person. Do you want some cornbread? Mm. You do? Okay, well, hold on a second. You want some cornbread, Mama? See, I'm a southern kitty. <laughs> I love my cornbread. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is pretty spicy. Those petite diced jalapeno habanero tomatoes that I used definitely upped the spice. And of course I added a little cayenne pepper, but you could definitely make this nowhere near as spicy. 
But this is great. My mouth is, my mouth is on fire. Okay, y'all, it is our second meal of the week. Tonight we are making a tater tot casserole, but not just any tater tot casserole. This has been labeled as the best tater tot casserole. We're gonna be the judge of that. We've had a lot of tater tot casseroles here. One of my favorite is cracked out chicken tater tot casserole. I'll try and remember and link that in the description box. I've made that here on my channel before. We've had lots of different versions and this one claims to be the best. So we're gonna put it to the test. I did not mean to rhyme. It's a really simple one. It's just me and Steven here tonight. It does not make a huge amount. So you could definitely double this and do like a nine by 13, but this is gonna make maybe an eight by eight casserole dish. I've already prepped everything. Let's put it all together and get it in the oven. The recipe calls for green beans, which I have. I just had some of these French cut on hand, but I was reading in the comments that other people put lots of different vegetables, whatever they had on hand. So we had some frozen corn. So we're gonna throw some corn in there too but otherwise I'm pretty much following the recipe word for word. Name that movie. I'm supposed to tell you what he said word for word. Okay, let's preheat the oven to 375. And I'm gonna go ahead and grease my baking dish. You wanna tell him you already had cheese? Huh? You already had some. Yes, you did. You want more? Okay, come on. You want more cheese? Okay. You already had some, princess. I've got this large skillet here. I'm heating it to about medium high, and we're gonna add in a pound of ground beef and cook that all the way through. While that's cooking, I'm gonna season it with a little bit of the everything seasoning by Auntie Nono's. Now that our ground beef is almost cooked through, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our onion, garlic as well. And we're also gonna add in some of the dub sauce. Let's just let this finish cooking and then it will be time to put everything in the baking dish. I did have to drain my ground beef because it was 85-15, it wasn't the leanest. So I drained that, now let's add it here in the bottom of our baking dish. Spread it out evenly. Now I'm gonna to top it with this can of cream of mushroom soup. I'm just gonna kind of spread that out as much as I can. Now we're gonna to top that with our green beans. I did drain them first. And I'm also gonna to top it with a little bit of corn. It's still pretty much frozen. It's been sitting out for a while, but. To this layer, I'm gonna add some more of the anti no nos You could always just season it with salt and pepper if you wanted to. Now let's add on about two cups of cheddar cheese that I've already shredded. And Gracie is over here begging for more. And lastly, we're just gonna cover the top with tater tots. This is going in the oven at 375 for 35 to 40 minutes. My favorite way to roast veggies is to toss it in some olive oil, which I've already done and then toss them in firecracker sea salt. So good. And I'm gonna air fry those for, I can't remember exactly how long it is. It'll be on 400, but I'll just press this little broccoli button and shake it halfway through. So the broccoli button is 300 for 10 minutes. How about a tater tot, corn, green bean, and hamburger casserole? <laughs> is that what this is? Yeah, it's called the best tater tot casserole. The we best. will be the judge of that. Okay, well, so far it looks good. It does. It's got all of the components of what we would consider to be a potential winner here. Mmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this sauce, but whatever's in there that's like. Okay, so there's some dub sauce in there in the ground beef. Man. But there's uh, cream of mushroom cream soup. Cream of mushroom. I would, that's what I was thinking it was. Yeah. It's like a. 
green bean casserole. Oh. Tater tot. Okay. Yeah. Thing. I mean, it's got the green beans. It's got mm. the cream of mushroom. Mm-hmm. Lou, you are, you're being very rude. Stop interrupting. Oh, man, that's really good. You don't really miss the onion stuff. Well, I mean, it's, it's got onions in the ground beef, but yeah, the French fried onions, I guess you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Why? Well, so, would you say this is the best tater tot casserole? I mean, it's up there. It's up there. Okay. It's up there. It's definitely up there. Okay. I'm I gonna... don't know. It's hard for me to say that because we've had so many versions of tater tot casserole, you yes, know, it's kind of hard have. to... The other one that was memorable was the, uh, almost like a sloppy joe tater tot casserole yes. type thing. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to give this one a shot. It's not the prettiest. It looks like a big ball of mess, quite honestly, but I'm excited. This is delicious. I don't know if I would say it's the best ever, but it is very, very good. I will agree. It's up there. It's up there. We need to look. I need to look back through and see the other tater tot casserole recipes that I have. Mm. Can I help you, ma'am? It's very rude. Yeah, but that's really good. And then, of course, our broccoli is delicious, too. Yeah, that's a great side. Yeah, we love this. the broccoli with the firecracker sea salt. Yes. And we like for it to get a little charred. You could always take it out a little earlier than that, but we like kind of like almost the burnt edges. Mm -hmm. So good. You look like you were about to say something. You got to get past the kind of the... The look of it the is not the... Aesthetics is yeah. not very <laughs> questionable. Right, right. But um, some of the best dishes are don't have the looks, but have the taste. That's, That's right. That's what matters, right? Mm. Okay, y'all, it is our third meal of the week, and y'all know what that means. It is subby supper night. Tonight's subby supper is one I am so interested in. The flavors sound so good. It is honey jalapeno pork chops. This recipe comes from Nancy. Nancy and her husband have both retired. They've been retired for three years now, and they love to travel America in their RV. They travel just the two of them and their rescue beagle named Violet. Nancy says she loves trying new recipes, creating new recipes, and spending lots of time with Violet. She said that she is the happiest puppy on earth. Thank you, Nancy, for sending in this recipe. It sounds so good. Let's get started. Okay, we have really thick pork chops, so we are going to tenderize them and kind of flatten them out a little bit. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some flour to this bowl, about a half a cup. Nancy said to season the pork chops before we tenderize them with some type of herb and garlic seasoning. So I'm just gonna use this Mr. Sticks. We're gonna do it without the butter. One pork chop at a time, we're going to put it in this bag and zip it closed. Let me get all the air out. I'm gonna take this and we are going to make these a good bit thinner. I think that's pretty perfect. Now, let's coat it in flour and set it to the side. We're just gonna repeat that process with all four. In our large skillet here, we've got just enough oil on the bottom just to cover it. We're heating it up to about medium high heat and we are going to sear our pork chops on both sides here in just a second. My sous chef over here who does the work I don't like to do. <laughs> We're just gonna sear these on both sides. While we wait on those to brown, I'm gonna heat this in the microwave. I've got two cups of water. You want it pretty hot because we're gonna put some bouillon base in there in just a little bit. Okay, so we removed them out. You want at least, well, about four tablespoons of oil down in the bottom of your pan. Now we're just gonna add some flour, about the same amount of flour as there is oil, so about four tablespoons of flour. Now I'm gonna take my whisk and we're just gonna cook this here on the stove just so that the flour isn't raw anymore. And then we'll be adding some more stuff to it. So you just wanna make sure that this kind of, I don't wanna say makes a paste, but you don't want it to be too thin either. So I just keep adding a little more flour until I get the consistency right. And this is much better. 
Okay, to our two cups of hot water, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of bouillon, or the better than bouillon. This is the beef flavored. And we're also gonna add about a fourth a cup to a half a cup of honey. Stir all of that together. I'm gonna just pour this in and stir it around. So it's starting to thicken, which is what you want. Now we're just gonna add in some diced jalapeno peppers. These are pickled jalapenos. If you can't find the diced ones, you can always just buy just the sliced and dice them up yourself. This is gonna be to taste how spicy you want yours. And if you get it too spicy, you can always add in some more honey and tone that down. Oh man, that smells good. Okay, so we tasted it and decided it needed more honey. So that's what I'm gonna do here is just add some more. So we're gonna go closer to the half a cup. Oh, that was a lot, huh? <laughs> so she said to add salt and pepper to taste. We're just gonna add a little bit of anti no nos Let's add our pork chops back in. We turned it down to low. We're gonna let this simmer covered for about 30 minutes. My professional taste tester decided that he wanted more garlic, so we added more garlic powder to it. And she did mention that if you love garlic to go for it, add more garlic, so you know that's what we did. These are almost done. I've got Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. I've got that video or that recipe linked below. I've shown it before. We've got some garlic cheddar biscuits like Red Lobster. I'll leave that video linked below. And we've also got mashed potatoes going over here in the instant pot. A sweet subscriber sent me this. This is roasted garlic olive oil. So I tossed our Brussels sprouts in that. It's the first time we've used it. We're excited about it. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> He's like dancing around the kitchen. He's so excited. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on here. chop smothered in jalapeno honey garlicky gravy it's gonna be good wow <laughs> is exceptional. The meat is extremely tender. Yay. It's like perfectly tender. Not quite tender enough to go without a knife, but almost. Okay. It's very close. Which is hard to do with pork chops, I yes, feel like. So. It is. But cooking them like that, letting them hang out in the pan like that, yeah. has made them really soft and juicy. The garlic really, really, really goes well with this. Okay. So you want... So how much garlic do we put in there? Probably a couple of teaspoons? I would say a teaspoon. Yeah, a couple of teaspoons couple would of teaspoons. be good. Okay. Um, and then it's spicy. So it's sweet, spicy, yeah. garlic, savory, sweet, spicy. It's just, it's really good. All right, so try your mashed potatoes with the gravy on it. Mm-hmm. Man. This is one happy dude right I now. I can't get over how incredibly tender this meat is. Well, it's butcher box yeah. pork chops. You know, we love us some butcher box, but Man. I think this was the perfect way to cook it. I'm gonna tell you right now, that gravy, put that on everything. Cole, I know you're busy over there eating. You got any thumbs up over there for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he hasn't slowed down. Man, this meat, gravy. Uh. Okay, I can't, I can't. I mean, just look at this, look at this plate. I'm digging in, I'll be back. Nancy, this may be my favorite pork chop I've ever eaten. This, the flavors on this, Stephen was just saying, 
the spiciness and the sweetness balance out perfectly. It's not hot, but it's not too sweet. It's so, so good. And man, these are super tender. The Brussels sprouts are delicious. Mashed potatoes are perfect. I already know I love this because we've already tasted those. So this is like, this is better than restaurant. Yeah. Cole's already done. He's already out. <laughs> but thank you, Nancy, for sharing this recipe. This is a favorite. It is much later in the evening. The dishwasher is going in the kitchen, so it's very loud. So I ran in here in the dining room to tell y'all bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That really does help out my channel. It also helps out if you leave a comment below. I love it when you guys comment and just kind of give me your thoughts and which one you're most excited about. And then if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button before you go. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. While this is cooking, I am gonna season it. Ooh, that's a little close. Take that off. All right. I've got Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. If you've ever, if, blah, 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 blah. I can tell. There's we some do. some spots on the camera. We need to clean that off. Okay. I can't, um, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the movie quote was from Ghost. It was Whoopi Goldberg. She was supposed to tell Demi Moore, what Patrick Swayze said, word for word. That's from the movie too. <laughs>